Hello learners, welcome to topic Lyophilization. I am Priyanka Patel and today I am going to explain about primary drying. If you want to thoroughly understand this topic, you must have complete knowledge about freezing of solution which is first step for lyophilization process. And for the same, kindly refer my previous videos. There are two separate videos for freezing of the substance. Learning objectives. This video will improve learner's knowledge regarding primary drying and factor affecting process rate. As you know that freeze drying process consists of three different stages, freezing, primary drying and secondary drying. In this video, we are going to discuss about primary drying only. Start with pretreatment. What is meaning of pretreatment? So sometimes to improve the product characteristic or to reduce the primary and secondary drying cycle time, pretreatment is done, which is called as treating the product before freezing. So pretreatment will generally improve the product stability or their surface area or their texture or decreases the cycle time for the primary and secondary drying. That method generally include concentration of the solution, freeze concentration or preservation of the product appearance or stabilization of the product or increased surface area and decreasing evaporation of the solvent. So any of the method that is addition or removal of the substance or changes in a concentration, it is done before freezing and it is referred as pre-treatment. Primary drying. What is meaning of primary drying? So primary drying step consists of removal of frozen moisture, that is ice, by sublimation, which results in a dry and structurally intact product. When we start primary drying, product mainly cons product consists of around 95% of the moisture. And at the end of primary drying, amount of moisture reduces to 5 to 10 percent. This stage consists of sublimation of ice from the product by evacuating the drying chamber, usually below 0.1 torr, and sublimating the ice on a cold condensing surface. And the temperature of the condenser must be below the temperature of the product. Sometimes condenser are kept in a same chamber and sometimes they are kept in a connected chamber. During primary drying, the temperature of the product must remain below its critical temperature, which is called as the collapse temperature in general. For crystalline substance, it is denoted as eutetic temperature and for amorphous substance, it is denoted as glass transition temperature. So in general, during primary drying, it is necessary that product temperature remains at least 5 degrees below its collapse temperature. As we know that in primary drying, sublimation of the ice takes place. So primary drying process mainly consists of two main issues that we have to understand and that we have to sort out to improve the product characteristic and to reduce the time cycle for primary and secondary drying. So first one is mass transfer. So meaning of mass transfer is as sublimation takes place, it leads to removal of ice in form of water. So here mass is transferred from container to the condenser. And to transfer the mass, there are so many barriers that affect the primary drying process. So that we are going to mainly discuss in this. And another one is heat transfer. So for sublimation to take place, we have to supply heat to the container and heat should be transferred from self to the frozen matrix. So mainly we are going to discuss about mass transfer and heat transfer for primary drying. This diagram indicates basics of heat and mass transfer in freeze drying process. As you know that during primary drying, sublimation of the ice takes place and after sublimation, it produces dry product. So dry product must be rigid enough so it can support its own weight after removal of the solvent. That's why it is necessary that product temperature remain below its collapse temperature. This diagram indicate direction of heat and mass transfer. As you can see over here, drying proceed downwards towards the bottom of the 
wire. So first layer is the dry layer or dry cake layer of the product. Second layer is the sublimation product. From that sublimation will take place and last layer remain in a frozen state. So when we apply a heat, first layer will be dry first, that is topmost layer will be dry first. And as the sublimation or as the drying proceed or sublimation proceed, thickness of dry layer increases. So as we have discussed that if larger ice crystals are there, it produces larger channel and smaller ice crystals are there, it will produce a smaller channel. So as the thickness of the dry layer increases, it provides resistance for the sublimation to occur. That means it will provide resistance for transfer of vapor from container to the condenser. So as the thickness of the dry layer increases, it provides greater barrier for the transfer of the mass from bottom to the condenser. This point out the importance of vial dimensions and volume of product per vial on the efficiency of the freeze drying process. If large volume of solution is present in vial to improve the surface area of primary drying, vial should be kept in a slanting position so it can improve the surface area for primary drying and we can reduce the resistance provided by the dry cake form after sublimation. So how heat transfer is another issue with primary drying. So as you can see over here, heat is supplied through the cells to control temperature in a chamber. That heat is transferred to the vial through the frozen state, it transferred to the sublimation front. So in initial process, thickness of the frozen solution is more. So it provides resistance for the transfer of heat to the top layer for sublimation to take place. So for primary drying and for sublimation, there are two main parameters which affect the process. That is temperature difference between product and temperature difference between the condenser. And another one is pressure gradient between sublimation front and chamber. So as I have explained in diagram, primary drying, it requires careful control of two parameter that is temperature and pressure. General rule is that chamber pressure should be significant lower than the vapor pressure of the ice at the targeted product temperature that is in range of 10 to 30 percent of the vapor pressure of the ice. If the target temperature is minus 33 degrees Celsius, that is collapse temperature is assumed minus 30 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of ice is 0.21 mmHg and the chamber pressure should be around 0.06 mmHg. Factor affecting process rate. Molecules generally migrate from high pressure to a low pressure area and vapor pressure is directly related to the temperature. If we increase the temperature, vapor pressure increases. So it is necessary that product temperature is always warmer than the cold trap or condenser temperature. So as we have discussed in this diagram, temperature difference between product and condenser is important parameter for primary drying to take place. So it is necessary that temperature of the product is always greater than the temperature of the condenser, then only molecule will migrate from high pressure zone to low pressure zone and it will provide sublimation at effective rate. The chamber pressure must be lower than vapor pressure of the ice in the product for drying to occur. And if pressure is too low, sublimation process will be too slow. So it will require longer time for completion of the cycle and it will also consume more energy. So it is necessary that sublimation will take place at effective rate and for effective sublimation rate, it is necessary that chamber pressure should not be more than half and not more less than quarter of the vapor pressure of the ice at desired product temperature. The passage gateway between product surface and condenser must be wide enough open and direct for effective sublimation. The amount of solid will also affect the rate of drying because the amount of solid in the product will define ice crystal size and their thermal conduction. So more solid are present, it will provide more barrier for the escape of the water 
vapor. Another one is degree of supercooling and ice crystallization. So as I have already explained during my freezing video, so, so if cooling rate is fast, degree of supercooling will be high and rate of crystallization will be fast and it will produce a small ice crystal. So primary drying will be slow because it produces smaller pores which will provide more resistance for the mass flow. And when cooling rate is low and degree of supercooling is low, it will provide slow rate of ice crystallization. So it will produce large ice crystal and it produces large pores and decreases resistance to the mass, putatic melting and collapse. The key to successful drying is to remove water vapor from the frozen cake without allowing liquid water to form. And for successful drying, it is also necessary that temperature is below eutetic temperature, but temperature is high enough to provide sufficient sublimation rate. If we consider every 1 degree increase in a temperature, about 13% increase in a sublimation rate. So eutetic melting involves melting of the eutetic phase and therefore it occurs throughout the frozen material. It results in a drying by evaporation of water from the liquid phase and collapse is generally deals with amorphous system analog of the eutetic melt. If product temperature rise above the collapse temperature, the amorphous solute water system gains sufficient fluidity and undergo viscous flow once the ice in that region has been sublimed. To prevent the collapse to occur, sometimes solutes are added which have tendency to get crystallized out. So that leads to increase in a collapse temperature. So sublimation can be performed at higher temperature. Annealing or thermal treatment is also done to convert the metastable state of the system to the crystalline state. End point of primary drying. Primary drying ends when almost 95 to 90% of the moisture has been removed from the product. Indication of the primary drawings are increase in a product temperature. That means when most of the moisture is removed, temperature of the product increases and it try to attain the temperatures as that of the self temperature. Another is the pressurized test. So generally, drying chamber and condenser are separated by the valve. If valve is closed in the drying chamber, and if there is increase in a pressure in a drying chamber, it indicates that still ice is present in a solution that lead to increase in a pressure in a drying chamber. So in that case, again, sublimation is continued and primary drying is continued. So key points which are needed to be remembered for primary drying is heat transfer and mass transfer, how it affects the sublimation rate. And another one is temperature difference between condenser and product and pressure difference between drying chamber and condenser. These are the main key points which you have to understand to digest the primary drying. With this, I conclude my video. These are the references. Thank you everyone for listening my video. If you have any doubt, you can contact me. Thank you once again.